suffer with acne or cystic acne. Today I'm here with my girlfriend, Crystal Verba. She's the owner of Refresh Natural Health Colon Hydrotherapy Clinic. And we're gonna be talking about how she cleared her cystic acne. She suffered for years with cystic acne and was able to completely resolve it. And it has never come back since. So I just wanted to bring her on and and just ask her to share her story on how she was able to resolve it so that maybe you can find hope in the situation that you can do the same. So, <laughs> Crystal. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, uh, cystic acne, that was something that I dealt with for a long time. Yeah. And there seemed to be so many different paths that I went through and different information that was thrown at me that I was like, oh, okay, so now I need to use this on my skin instead and I need to eat this instead. And if I do this, my skin will be better. And it took a long time to finally get the answers that were right for me. And it's a little bit unique for each person. So I think that I'd love to share a little bit about my story and then we can talk about a few of the details. I'd say there's probably about four things that are the most important that you can do to really uncover the root cause behind your acne. So you're not just trying to, you know, put stuff on your skin thinking it's gonna work and then it doesn't because <laughs> I've been there and I know how frustrating that can be. Yeah. So for me, acne started when I was about 15, 16 years old. And at that time, going around to different doctors, all they would prescribe to me was Accutane, birth control. And I was like, I don't really wanna do that because if I take that, then I will have no indication of when I'm actually healed. Mm -hmm. Like when my body's actually in balance. I don't know how at 15, 16, I had that sort of feeling within, but I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I went on this path of diet. I remember seeing a naturopath and the naturopath told me to stay away from foods, um, the dairy, gluten, and sugar. Mm -hmm. So those three foods were instrumental in what helped me first get a handle of acne. I remember I still kept breaking out around my period though. And I was like, why am I breaking out around my period? And then that continued to go down a path of my acne getting so bad that it became cystic. And when I say cystic, I think Krista, you're gonna share some photos here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cystic acne so bad that if I put my face down on a pillow, it would bleed on the pillow and it hurt so bad I couldn't sleep. So it was affecting me in a big way and I was also involved in the film industry back then as an actress. So that was my career, that was my livelihood, that was my dream and the cystic acne was holding me back from that. So when I finally um, really figured out what was causing my acne, it was after dealing with the cystic acne for probably about two years and I was using all the skincare stuff. I was using uh, proactive, I was using different clinique things, I was using anything I could put on because I'd already dealt with the diet stuff and we can go into the diet more if you want to as well. Mm -hmm. But um, what it really came down to for me was a deeper la layer of toxicity that was throwing my, ba my body into a state of dis-ease which we've talked about mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Like when our body is thrown off by things that are not naturally supposed to be in our system, it can stop different processes in our body from happening. And I believe it's about 40% of the population that actually has a challenge in methylation pathways in the liver that stop your body from being able to detox properly. So yes, we should be able to naturally detox the contaminants in our environment, but each year more and more people are born with a genetic defect that makes it so we can't detox as easily as we once were able to. And I happen to have this, as do many of the clients that I've worked with. And when you have something like this, your body is more likely to build up a toxicity of mold, a toxicity of heavy metals, um, uh, hormone toxicity, like bad estrogen levels, you could have harder time detoxing them out. So we really want to, especially in cases of cystic acne, figure out what that deeper cause is. What is throwing your system out of balance? 
For me, when I got tested on my heavy metals, I had 40 times the amount of mercury a person should have in their system. Wow. I remember bringing my test results to the hospital because I was like, here, for so long, they had told me, nothing's wrong with you, you just have acne. I'm like, nothing's wrong with me. This is affecting my entire life. That's wrong, something's wrong with me. And so when I finally was able to bring those test results, they asked me if as I was a kid, maybe I ate a thermometer or was I playing with mercury as a kid? I never had dental amalgams, the mercury fillings that um, a lot of people have in their mouth. I never had those. So there was no clear source as to why my body would build up that amount of mercury toxicity. Um, knowing what I know now about my genetic pathways, I understand that my body was limited in its ability to process those out. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think something we always, we need to remember as well is if, if we have something that's really affecting the quality of our life that just doesn't seem right, whether it's acne, whether it's, you know, chronic allergies or some kind of a, an infection, whatever it is, it's just, it's a sign that there is something wrong inside, that there's an imbalance within the body that needs to be really corrected, mm, right? Yeah. It's a sign. It's like the body crying for, for help for you to make some kind of a change, right? But it's just figuring out what is that exactly? Exactly. Right? And it could be like, we always look back to stress. Like what is causing stress on the body? Is it mold? Is it mercury? Is it, um, is it chemical? Yeah. Is it infection? Is it like emotional or physical or exactly. whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then a lot of times when stuff is coming out in your skin, it's an indication that your liver is, um, it's over overwhelmed and that's when your liver can't handle the amount of toxicity it starts to purge out of your skin right and that's exactly what was happening with me mm -hmm. and so many people that I've worked with that are suffering from cystic acne they're under a lot of stress that that is causing them stress every single day and if you look at Chinese medicine our liver holds our stress our anger our sadness and that's also where we have this methylation issue in a lot of cases where we can't detox these things out of our body, whether that's external or internal stress. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are a few steps that you can get started with? Mm -hmm. um, number one, let's talk number one from a dietary perspective. So say you're just getting started on, on your health journey, you've decided you want to resolve skin issue, what would you, what action would you take from a dietary standpoint just to get yeah. started? So right away, you need to get all the foods out of your diet that could be causing inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that often is going to be dairy. Some people do fine with dairy, but you won't really know until you take it out of your diet for two weeks and compare how you're feeling. The dairy molecules are much larger than our system is designed to digest. So when you take that in, your body gets inflamed just through the natural process of digesting those larger molecules. Mm -hmm. uh, gluten mm -hmm. is another one. Yeah. Some people are fine with gluten, but the more and more our modern age society processes gluten, it becomes more genetically modified. Our body doesn't recognize that in the same way that it used to. So even if you were fine with gluten 10 years ago, the gluten that you're exposed to now is very different than it was then. Um, so that's also one that causes inflammation and can also lead to severe leaky gut, which contributes to acne and mm -hmm. in its um, more acute state. Mm -hmm. uh, sugar is going to cause inflammation in the body. So those three things are the main things that I immediately will take out of someone's diet, dairy, gluten, and sugar for a minimum two week period. And let's see how your body responds. Um, eggs are also very hard to digest, so on occasion mm -hmm. I'll take those out as well. We're just taking out anything that you know you eat that makes you feel not so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, yeah, and if you want to learn a little bit more about this, you can also just search online about elimination diets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that can be really, you know, a great way to figure it out. Well, what is my body, what is my body reacting to, right? Yeah. So that's a good... And what an amazing way to tap into your body. Like mm -hmm. one of the reasons that so many people are out there suffering with cystic acne is because we're relying on a medical system that doesn't really take cystic acne seriously. Mm -hmm. So they want to patch it up. They don't want to actually heal it in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, See, functional medicine is much, much more advanced. Um, if you can find a functional medicine practitioner. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. And okay, so, so that is diet, yep. right? So mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory diet. Mm -hmm. And then 
What about from a toxicity standpoint? What, what, what do you think are some good first steps that you can take to start mm -hmm. addressing that deep like toxicity in the body? Finding out what it is in the first place can be really helpful because then you can take mm -hmm. steps to heal that toxicity, to remove that tox toxic load from your body. Uh, if you think it could be heavy metals, that would be you know high mercury, high lead, um, high aluminum, um, you could get a, a chelation test done. A, a lot of naturopaths will do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, Krista, you mm -hmm. can provide more information to anyone that mm -hmm. asks. Um, there's different sorts of tests. One of them is known as a push test. And that's where they put a chelating agent into your bloodstream that goes on a deeper level and starts to claw out, almost magnetize to the metals in your body. And then you urinate for eight hours and they, um, they send that urine off to a lab. And uh, that's what they test to see what your levels are at. That's what I did to find my levels were as high as they are. Unfortunately, that type of testing can be harder on the kidneys. So there are other tests available. I know Quicksilver Scientific has a great test that they offer um, and a lot more. You could speak to your naturopath to find out the best way. Mm -hmm. But I found that blood testing for metals is not very useful. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. There's also mold testing that you can do. Again, a standard medical doctor is going to be a, less, a lot less likely to, to prescribe a mold or metal test just because it's not part of their general practice. A naturopath or a functional medicine doctor, you'll get a lot further with, with that testing. Mm -hmm. And then doing a hormone panel to see what's going on. What, what hormones are, are lacking in your body? Um, like I said, I had a lot of bad estrogens in my system and I was lacking in the good estrogens. So that was throwing my body out of balance. Um, but you really got to look at that toxicity level first because m my hormones were likely out of balance because my body was constantly and chronically dealing with high levels of toxicity. Mm -hmm. So just to speak to phase two detox for a minute. Yeah. Um, so phase two detox is where a lot of people struggle with. That's a methylation pathway I was talking about. So phase one detox is relatively easy for people to do. You can take uh, chlorella for metals. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do a lot of the different herbal supports that I'm sure you share on this channel. Uh, but if you're not dealing with phase two, phase two is where your body actually removes the things through your skin, through your bowels, through your urine. Uh, that's how you actually get rid of it. But if you're part of the population that has a methylation issue there, your body is going to not know, not have the tools to be able to get rid of this toxicity. And instead, it's going to stress your liver out, stress your kidneys out, and then recycle through your bloodstream, recirculating everything. And guess what? It comes out in the skin then. Mm -hmm. So phase two detox, that's why I run a colon hydrotherapy clinic. When I first healed myself, uh, the doctor that I was working with at the time, who was incredible, had me doing colon hydrotherapy treatments three times a week for two weeks, and then I tapered off from there, and also doing coffee enemas every single day for two weeks. And within two weeks, the difference in my skin was insane. Uh, yeah. I agree. Coffee enemas are amazing. Amazing. <laughs> even I haven't struggled with cystic acne, but just even... You know, there was a period of time where I was doing a lot of coffee enemas and I noticed an amazing difference in my skin. It's so. incredible. I love coffee enemas. They're so like, <laughs> I know. And we could do a whole thing <laughs> on coffee enemas. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like coffee enemas saved my life mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And you know, you can look at the research of Dr. Gerson and the development of coffee enemas for liver detox specifically. And they are so supportive for phase two detox. So. I won't do a cleanse now of any kind, herbal, um, dietary, without incorporating coffee enemas because anytime I'm moving stuff through my system, I know my body needs that extra support. Mm -hmm. I've also had people that are dealing with depression, like severe emotional challenges that do a coffee enema. Like we had um, a person that was actually suicidal that did a coffee enema and came back and was like, you don't understand, you saved my life because of how much of that anger and sadness and stagnancy we hold in our liver. So I would definitely suggest trying one if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what are some other, so coffee enemas are one practice mm -hmm. that can start removing toxicity mm -hmm. from the body that you can start doing now at home by yourself mm -hmm. without needing anyone else. What do you think are some other strategies that you can, that you can just start doing now to start 
helping to remove some toxicity from your body. So uh, that you feel like that helped you. Yeah. So taking that dietary stress away, mm -hmm. like just, just don't do it when your body's healing, it doesn't need that extra stuff. Mm -hmm. So taking that away is number one. Um, you could try different supplementation with things like turmeric, um, mm -hmm. Uh, DIM DIM would mm -hmm. be really good to remove bad estrogens a lot of times that's why um, women will have flare-ups around their period is because they have a high amount of the unhealthy estrogen um, the coffee enemas that we talked about and mm -hmm. colon hydrotherapy also is very different than doing a coffee enema so in colon hydrotherapy you have five feet of large intestine and then about 50 feet of small intestine mm -hmm. and in your large intestine that's where stuff goes where it's basically getting ready to be eliminated mm -hmm. you also produce vitamin k in there you can produce potassium there's some things that happen but for the most part that is fecal matter that is just moving out of your system we should only have about five pounds of fecal matter in our five feet of intestine. But in some autopsies, like of um, you know Elvis Presley, for instance, there's like 50 pounds of fecal matter just in his large intestine. So that shows you what the body is capable of dealing with if you let it. <laughs> but you don't want to because that's gonna slow you down and make you feel like garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, so doing a colon hydrotherapy session not only strengthens the peristaltic motion of the colon, but it also helps to remove that fecal matter and a lot of the mucoid plaque, a lot of the toxicity that's stored in the colon that may have been there for years that is causing this toxic environment. We always talk about it like taking your car to get the oil changed. Like there's going to be stuff in there that just on a day-to-day -day basis isn't coming out, which over time leads to aging issues, leads to just feeling sluggish, mental fatigue, all of the things that we deal with and we go, why do I feel this way? These are practices through your diet, through nutrition, um, through supplementation, and these detox protocols that are really gonna help. Mm -hmm. So the colon hydrotherapy is just water instead of coffee, but it really helps to hydrate your cells on a deeper level. And that cellular hydration makes the cells able to release toxic load into the colon. And the last thing I wanna say on that, because this is often misunderstood, is that your colon, like your body's really smart. So if you have deeper levels of toxicity and your body knows that it needs to release it from your cells, from your bones, from your muscles, it needs to release it into your colon. But if your colon is backed up and full of other toxins, your body's very smart. It's not gonna do that. It's not going to. So when you do a colon hydrotherapy session, you create space, you create energy for your body to be able to release the toxins so they don't come out in your skin anymore. Mm -hmm. It's great, yeah. it's great info. And there's um, probably lots of supplements you also yeah yeah and also mm. just even doing stuff like oil pulling oh you know yeah. swishing coconut oil around in your mouth um body brushing mm, infrared exercise sauna. saunas yeah. right these are ways that we can really just support the body support yeah. the detoxification organs right so coconut charcoal coconut charcoal yeah. so yeah. whenever i go into a sauna mm -hmm. just because i know of the phase two detox challenges I have, mm -hmm. I'll take coconut charcoal because it helps absorb the toxicity in the colon, mm. which makes it so that my liver, my kidneys, my skin doesn't have to deal with it as much. It's more contained. Okay. And then I can flush it out my colon. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've at this stage in your journey, right? You've changed your diet. You have gone really kind of intense with, with releasing toxicity mm -hmm. from your body. Mm -hmm. You've had this testing done. You've, you've, um, receive support from a naturopath who's helped you, um, you know, start doing heavy metal, get the heavy metals mm -hmm. out of your body. Mm -hmm. So at what was, what state were you in at this point? Mm -hmm. And then what happened next? What, what was kind of the conclusion of, of being able to resolve this issue? So in my case, the cystic acne I was experiencing was just the beginning of what became multiple autoimmune disorders. So like, I would have loved to just be able to ignore that, but it just kept persisting. And then my body, I ended up losing the sight in my left eye for a while. And like all of this autoimmune, like where my body's basically attacking itself. 
So when I went to first start work with um, a doctor in Reno, Nevada, and he had me start doing colonics three times a week, coffee enemas three times or every single day, I did that for two weeks, and my skin got a lot better. So I think that's where we left off. My skin was better. I was starting to see improvements. Now I still didn't have enough energy to truly heal everything that was going on with me. Mm -hmm. And that's when we did hormonal tests. And I found out that my adrenals, I had had chronic fatigue since I was 15 years old. It was hard to get out of bed. No one took me seriously. No one wanted to do hormonal tests. So I started doing bioidentical hormone treatment along with the detoxification and dietary recommendations. And I would say within six months, I felt so much better. Like my energy was back, I could think again, I had that, that clarity that I had been missing for basically my whole life. Um, and from that point forward, I would have minor relapses for a while around my period because mm -hmm. that's just like your, your body's in a natural state of detox when you have your period. So if, you're don't ha if you don't have your detox pathways open during that time, it's going to be um, a more challenging, weakened state that your body's in and therefore you're more likely to have acne flare-ups. So I dealt with that, but within six months, I was like, feeling really good and like okay I got this and now I can have gluten every once in a while mm -hmm. and if I want to I can have sugar I can I still can't have dairy that really messes me up but I can have those things and I can like cheat on my my like regular diet because my body's strong enough to handle it but initially I had to be really laser focused and really committed to the changes that I was making and within six months I have never looked back I opened up the health clinic I went through all sorts of stress to get that done with different licensing and everything and I remember the whole time I was going through that I was like oh my gosh like what if my acne comes back because now I'm all stressed again and I'm not taking care of myself as well as I was before but I was fine because my foundation was solid again and I knew the protocols I had to do. So any minute, any day that I felt overtired, overstressed, that I hadn't eaten properly or maybe forgot to eat, I knew that I had the coffee enemas, the supplementation, the oil pulling, the infrared sauna, things to bring my body back into balance. And I started mm -hmm. to listen again, mm -hmm. especially for women. we. We just need to reconnect to that, that, that intuition within that guides us on what our body needs. Okay, so let's just give a, just a quick recap of kind of this process to resolving the cystic acne. Mm -hmm. So it started with changing your diet, mm -hmm. to kind of uh, getting more to an anti-inflammatory diet, removing inflammatory foods, two, uh, taking action on reducing toxicity, mm -hmm. right, through coffee enemas and colonics, and then involving a naturopathic doctor to do testing around heavy metals and hormones mm -hmm. and um, and then doing doing the like procedures to kind of resolve the so getting rid of the heavy metal toxicity mm -hmm. and then resolving the hormonal imbalances right mm -hmm. so that was that's like a kind of that was a synopsis of the yeah kind definitely. of what resolved it definitely. right yeah. and knowing that this isn't a lifelong thing you're not going to have to be yeah. the bubble girl or the bubble boy forever you just mm -hmm. have that specific period of time that you focus on healing yeah and then you're yeah. able to make like you know you can flow in life again yeah so mm -hmm. i really hope that this has inspired you and just to let you know that you can totally resolve this issue. It's just, you just have to kind of have a new perspective, see things differently and really decide that you are going to resolve this issue and just get the support that you need from whether that's a, you know, a functional medicine practitioner or a naturopathic doctor. And also just really dive into learning about this natural health lifestyle because you can, you know this can be resolved and i know that there's so many people in the world that are suffering and i hope that this has inspired you so thank you so much crystal for being here with me today in this video i'm here with crystal verba in this video we talked about how she cleared her cystic acne thank you so much for watching i appreciate you for watching this video and i will see you on the next one bye hello my friend be sure to check out the videos that i've hand selected for you here and here 
And also subscribe to my channel here. And if there's any video topics in regards to natural health and fitness that you would like me to speak about, then please let me know in the comments below. And also just say hi, I would love to meet you. Have an amazing day and I will see you on the next one. Bye.